in the mouth, you have bacteria. The whole population of bacteria is called the oral microbiome. It, it's the complete collection. 20%, the small percentage, float around in your saliva. They are single cell. They are floating like plankton in the ocean waters. They love to attach to your teeth. They love the backwaters, the little places where you don't brush very well. Did you ever do, did you ever do one of those pink tablets as a kid where you chew up yeah. the tablet and it, it's stained where you didn't brush properly? Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of reintroducing that because that's the plaque you don't even know you've got. The places where when you're brushing every day, you brush, you turn your, your wrist and you miss these three teeth every day. We all do it unless we're being really focused on brushing our teeth. There are difficult places where our teeth are slightly crooked or they stick out more. And the bit behind is where the, the back water, that's where the plaque sticks. And the thing is, the stuff that's loose and floating around is easy to kill bacteria in that. And in the, those floating around bacteria are the ones we have to think about, the ones that form plaque. Now, in 2007, that wasn't that long ago to me. <laughs> I know exactly what I was doing in 2007. And it actually took until 2014, 15 for the results to come out. So that's even closer to today. So most of the people watching this probably can identify with 2015. That was when we discovered the Human Microbiome Project, which was an international project where they had scientists all over the world looking at the bacteria on, the hu on and inside the human body. And they looked at every orifice. They looked at the ears, the mouth, the nose, you know, the vagina, everywhere in the body. And they documented the bacteria in thousands and thousands of people that they were looking at. And as far as the mouth went, they were astounded because they found over 800 kinds of bacteria. Now, prior to that, and I think we could probably say it was about 2014, only a few of us were really into this before and during. And they were mainly the people in the xylitol worlds because we knew something about xylitol. We knew that xylitol modulated. It didn't kill. It just changed things in the mouth to promote more good bacteria and get rid of bad ones. And we knew that from 1970. And we knew that in 1970 because what they did with xylitol was they gave it to pregnant mothers who had 100% plaque. And in those days, remember, they thought plaque and biofilm were the same. So they thought that meant the mouths were just absolutely seething with plaque. And they gave these mothers seven grams of xylitol, which is, is like seven pieces of gum a day and uh, with one gram of xylitol in each piece. So they ate this, it, it was a blister card, you know, with those where they, you push out the gum. They gave each woman one of those a day. And for the last three months of pregnancy and for a year, these women had seven grams of xylitol a day. At the baby was born after three months and the women continued to eat xylitol for a year. Then the researchers took all the xylitol away. No more xylitol. They took, a, they left the country. There was no special dentistry. This is a country with a high decay rate. Children have high rates of decay. The researchers went back every year and looked at the children, the teeth of the children born of these mothers, not the mothers. What they had discovered was these children at six years old had 85% less tooth decay. And remember the babies didn't have any xylitol. They were too young when they left the country with the xylitol. So the only change that had occurred was in the mother's mouths. This made us fully aware that 
it, the women with 100% plaque in their mouths, they actually measured it, over the six months, the first six months of them taking xylitol at that dosage had gone from 100% plaque in their mouths to 92% plaque gone. Gone. But we didn't know what else was in there. They just eliminated the plaque. Now, if you're a pediatric dentist, six months, three months of that was when the mother was pregnant. Three months was when the, after the baby was born. Baby teeth come in at about six months. So by the time baby teeth were erupting in the child's mouth, the mothers had healthy bacteria in their mouths, completely healthy. I don't know if I'm describing this right. You're, you're yeah. nodding, so I'm hoping so. So the mothers were kissing their babies and transferring to baby teeth the bacteria that stick on baby teeth that were healthy. In other words, the microbiome that sticks on teeth were healthy. And what the researchers realized was that was protective. It was not just protecting the baby teeth at the age of one or two, it was being transferred into that child's mouth as the child grew year after year. And this is what we know now. If you take care of baby teeth, and ideally by helping the mother, pregnant mother, have a healthy mouth, and all the family kiss the baby with healthy bacteria, the baby teeth get covered with healthy bacteria. And this, now we know healthy biofilm exists. It doesn't have to be plaque. Plaque is infected biofilm, infected with plaque producing bacteria. But if you separate those two kinds of biofilm and you ensure that your child grows up with healthy biofilm, as I was able to do with my youngest child, she has never had a dental cleaning. She has never had anything much done to, she's never had anything done to her teeth. Her wisdom teeth erupted perfectly fine. Her mouth is healthy. She's 35 years old, never had a dental cleaning, actually was in a Whole Foods um, smile ad because her teeth are beautiful. She's never whitened them. She's never done anything to them except use the products that I recommend to keep them healthy. So this is possible. This is what they do in other countries. In Denmark, where they use this for pregnant women and children, the average amount of decay in Denmark is a quarter of a tooth per person, adult and child, countrywide. What would American dentistry do? In Finland, they have the, understood this for so many years because xylitol is not new. Xylitol is 100 or more years old in these countries where they have the birch tree forests, which is where xylitol comes from. And for people who have not heard of xylitol and are saying, what is this? I'm just going to grab a few things. Um, Xylitol is a granular sugar. It comes from birch trees, but it looks just like a pack of sugar if you buy them in little packets. And you can bake with it. You can cook with it. It's diabetic safe. It tastes exactly like sugar. During World War II, it was used in place of table sugar in Europe and in England. And what they discovered was after the war, people had very healthy teeth. And some scientists did some studies and noticed that children who grew up eating xylitol, in other words, with a healthy oral microbiome, they didn't have ear, these children didn't get ear infections. And uh, a nasal spray was developed back then um, with xylitol, which you, you can buy for children and adults. And it makes the, my, the microbiome, the bacteria lining your nasal passage is healthier. And for children, if you do that, you'll help stop ear infections because the bacteria in children get into a little tube at the back of the throat. So the health of the mouth and the health of the nose for a child is really important. And if your child has plaque 
in the or unhealthy nasal passages, they'll probably be getting ear infections. So Isolitol nasal spray is the safest, healthiest way to adjust that. And so um, in Finland, they have been handing out Xylitol as either a little mint or, or a piece of gum in preschool. As the kids arrive, they give them a piece of gum, they chew it up, get the Xylitol out of it, spit it out, because that's how you use the gum. You don't chew it for an hour or more like they do here in America. You want to just get the Xylitol out of the gum or you take it as a little mint, um, you know, like a breath mint that is made with 100% xylitol. And it's the xylitol that feeds the good bacteria and that makes any plaque that's stuck on your teeth slippery feeling. And they atta attach these little round seeds, which then grows plaque. They, they change from a little round seed into a little elongated bacteria profile that has little tendrils that actually glue the plaque to your teeth. That it's made from sugars. Now, if these plaque bacteria, they will absorb sugar. That's why sugar causes tooth decay. It, it actually, the, the sugar doesn't attack your teeth. Sugar feeds these elongated bacteria that then produce these sticky tendrils that glue them to your teeth and they multiply and they glue themselves together one next to the other next to the other like little rows of soldiers and then they layer one upon another upon another and they get so thick if you've ever scraped off something white off your teeth it is a seething mass of those bacteria just so you know that's how i would describe it to my patients particularly little boys who like the graphics and if you give them low oxygen conditions, they'll become anaerobic. And that's what happens on your tooth. As the plaque thickens, the ones on the inside change. They start to not be able to breathe properly. There's too thick a blanket on top. So they turn and become anaerobic. Once they're anaerobic, they produce toxins, poison. And it is that poison that makes your gums puff up and swell and bleed if the bleeding is caused by plaque. Mm. And that is the beginning of gum disease. So why do I like Listerine? Because not only does Listerine help grow gum tissue, which is one good reason, but the second reason is it actually gets rid of, not in the, they cannot get into any of these bacteria once they're stuck on a tooth. Listerine is incapable of that but it can work on the bacteria that are floating in your saliva. That's the only thing it does. It doesn't penetrate the plaque. So you can't get rid of plaque just with Listerine. In fact, you'll make it worse. That's why we need Xylitol. As I told you the whole big story of the pregnant women, Xylitol gradually gets rid of these bacteria. It doesn't kill any of them. It feeds them and it feeds all the good bacteria in your mouth. And the plaque bacteria, these, these ones that usually feed on sugar, they absorb the xylitol, and xylitol is a five carbon sugar. It's only got five molecules, a different shape. I haven't got six fingers, but if I had six fingers, this is a different, this is a sugar molecule, and this is a, a xylitol molecule. And once these bacteria have absorbed this thing, they cannot, it's like the wrong ratchet. It just can't get a hold of the sugar for energy. So they run out of energy and they can't make these sticky tendrils anymore. And so they become slippery. And the next time you brush your teeth, they're going to slip off your teeth. So you just have to do really vigorous, good tooth brushing and you will get rid of this plaque. And if you gently floss, I'm not opposed to that, but do you understand that if you're not using xylitol and you're not getting rid of these new bacteria that are just waiting to land again on your new tooth, because that's what happens if you don't get rid of them in your saliva and if you don't get rid of them off your teeth, they just regrow and regrow and regrow. Every time you clean your teeth with floss and brushing, every time you go to the dentist and have a dental cleaning, perfect. 
until you go to the front desk and the saliva in your mouth that's full of these bad bacteria land on your teeth and start growing infected biofilm again. 